Welcome to Cisco Training Videos. My name is Trevor. The topic for this video is going to go in depth into what the CCENT and CCNA certifications are and how you obtain them. This is going to be the beginning of two brand new video series that I'm developing here on YouTube. And what these series are going to do is they're going to be a full walkthrough in how to be successful in your journey towards becoming certified in Cisco. Before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about myself since we'll be spending so much time together during this video series. My name is Trevor and I work at Rackspace Hosting on the Enterprise team. I love my job. I get to work with some of the biggest companies in the world and I get to sit around some of the smartest people in the industry. I, I sit next to CCIEs and I learn from them on a day-to-day -day basis. I also have an enormous passion for Cisco and teaching it. I really hope that throughout this video series you start finding yourself developing a passion for networking and you just you fall in love with it because that's really what is what's going to happen. It's either a make or break kind of point. You either find yourself loving it, wanting to study, wanting to know more, wanting to figure out that very next thing that, that makes it work, or you'll find yourself kind of getting lost in it and, and not really enjoying it. You either love it or you hate it. I, I really hope that you continue and that everybody who watches this loves it, but it, it, keep in mind networking isn't something that's for everybody so uh, at some point you will find yourself at that turning point in, in deciding is this for me or is this not for me so back to our original question what is the CSENT and what is the CCNA the CCENT stands for Cisco Certified Entry Level Networking Technician and the CCNA stands for Cisco Certified Networking Associate so th think of the Cisco certifications as a little pyramid I've kind of I, I drew it out right over here and what this pyramid is displaying is the different levels of the certifications CCENT is going to be that very base of the pyramid so everything that you learn in your career is going to start with the CCENT fundamentals and you're going to work your way up as you go through the certification tracks you have to have a strong foundation if you want to get up to the higher certifications because they all use the knowledge that is required and needed and, and, and you experience it in the CCENT this is going to be the certification that will get your foot into the industry you, maybe a help desk position something like that the CCNA is going to be the next certification higher this is going to be mainly for network administer, administrators and, and environments and for companies this is going to be the starting point certification you'll see that this is required for a lot of positions where they want somebody who has a little bit of experience and who kind of knows their way around a network and how to troubleshoot it Cisco recently redid the CCENT and CCNA certifications and I love the revisions they did they added some really awesome concepts that were not in the older versions of the certifications I'm really happy that they did that too because as the technology changes the certifications need to change also the next tier is going to be the CCMP certification this is going to be your professional cert. Generally, it's going to take three to four tests in order to achieve this CCMP title. A majority of companies for management or higher administrator level positions will require CCMP certifications. After that, you have CCIE. This is where it truly gets impressive. There's only about 42,000 CCIEs during the making of this video in the world right now. I sit next to a couple of them at work, and these guys are... They're, they're limitless. They, they know so much. It, it's truly impressive when somebody can achieve this level of certification. It, honestly, it's really motivating when you get to meet somebody who has it because it shows you that, hey, it, it, with, with hard work, it really will pay off and you really can do it. Okay, so now that we have the certification structure of how Cisco lays out the different tiers of the certification tracks that you can go through, there's two different ways you can get the CCNA. You can take the first way, which is the route that I recommend to everybody that I tutor and train. Take the 100-101 test first. This is the ICND-1 test. Once you pass this, you're CSENT certified. So it's this layer right here. This is that entry-level certification. The advantage of doing this is when you take the 100-101, you're only covering the ICND-1 concepts and you have the same amount of time if you were to take this other test. Once you're ready, you, once you pass this exam, continue studying. Now you start studying the CCNA concepts, the ICND-2, and then you take the ICND-2 exam, which is 200-101. Once you pass this exam, you are now CCNA certified. Alternatively, you could just take one exam, the 200-120, and that would get you the CCNA exam as well. The problem with this, for people who are new to the industry, this exam is tough compared to the other way. This is going to be a condensed version of all the concepts that ICD-1 and ICD-2 go over. 
and you have less time. The only reason why this exam exists really and generally is for people who are trying to recertify because they're their certification is about to expire. Every three years, you need to take an equal or higher certification in order for your certs to renew. So this isn't ideal for somebody who's brand new to the industry just because the time restriction and that it's over all of the concepts versus taking the CSENT first and then taking the ICNV2 CCNA exam after that. So one of the biggest arguments I hear through the, uh, against this logic is I don't want to take two certifications. That's more difficult than taking one exam. So I'm just going to take the 200 and pass for my CCNA when I'm starting. That's actually inaccurate though. If you take the two test approach, it's going to be easier because the exam is specific to only half of the content. When you take CSENT, you're not going to get advanced CCNA concepts on that exam. It's going to be completely over just that very first book, that 100-101 ICD-1 book, and it's just going to have concepts in that area. And then once you're ready to progress to CCNA, that's where they're going to start introducing spanning tree, advanced EIGRP, and OSPF, and they're going to throw in HSRP and global load balancing concepts, things like that. You don't; Those concepts are not going to be on the CSENT exam, so take it in a tiered approach. Plus, you get the certification as you go. If you take the first exam, you're going to have CSENT, and then take the second exam. The next biggest thing is I hear people say uh, that there's a cost difference. Well, it's cheaper to take one exam than it is to take two. That That's not true either. It depends on where you are in the world, but uh, last time I checked, the uh, the 100-101 exam costs $150, and the 200-101 exam costs $150. So you take each exam, and that adds up to be $300 total. If you were to take the 200-120, that one exam costs $300. So it's the same cost in the end. The only difference is the tests are splitting the knowledge and the amount of content that you need to be tested over. So why wouldn't you take that tiered approach? That's the logic behind it, the way I think at least. So that's what I always recommend. Well, I hope that cleared up a little bit more for you what the CSENT and CCNA exams are. In, this, in the next videos of this series, I'm going to go over the different types of questions that will exist on the exam and the different concepts that are going to be tested on the CSENT and CCNA exams. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you made it to the end. Congrats. Go ahead and watch the next video. Please leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section below.